Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fridays at Five. I'm Karen Taylor of the Color Vowel Chart. So glad to have you here. Uh, we haven't had a Fridays at Five uh, in, a, in a few Fridays. <laughs> so they're typically on the first Friday of the month, just so you kind of know our rhythm. Um, and the topics change each time. So today's topic is Color Vowel in the Elementary Classroom. And we're very excited to have uh, Chelsea Olson and Becky Horner. Go ahead and say hello there. We see you in the room uh, with us today, straight from their classrooms because it's a school day. Um, maybe maybe one of you had a half day. I don't know. We did where we were. So my kids have been out, but I know teachers stay all the way down to the end of the, of the wire there. Um, as we get started, let me just make a, a little bit of housekeeping uh, so that we know how we got here, how to get back here, uh, what happens if you're not here and uh, you're, I don't know, catching this on YouTube later on and want to know how to find us in the future. Um, this is our teachers community, the Color Vowel teachers community. And I'm going to share with you a link in the chat, which is learn.colorvowel.com. That's how you can get signed up for the Color Vowel teachers community. Uh, what I love about this is it's our own little uh, social world that's apart from the the big boy you know uh, social media so if you don't do facebook if you don't do insta guess what we don't either <laughs> we don't do insta <laughs> or, <laughs> the only so many places we can go so we do have a facebook community um, but this is really open to everybody it's free and it allows us to post events so if you make it to our teachers community enroll for free, you can um, find, you know, this event right here, the Zoom link and join. Okay. We also have a way then to, uh, once you're a member, we email you and remind you about upcoming events like we did for our participants today. So do take a moment to go to learn.colorval.com. Uh, you can also find all of our events coming up. This is where you land when you, when you come here um, and you can start to see all of the many courses and communities that we offer. Um, check out the top nav. If you are a teacher, you can check out the teacher resources. If you're a learner of English, uh, you can check out Peer English Practice and our Speak Confidently course. And if you're a learner and a teacher, we have all kinds of things for you. Uh, so that's just a, a bit of a, a promo for our learning and teaching website. Wonderful. Hey, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, so glad to have you here. The topic today is elementary school English learners, what challenges they face and what it is we teachers can do with color vowel to bridge that gap and to help them through these challenges. I'd like to start with just ideas before we bring in our, our wonderful guest speakers. Uh, who is working with children and what do you find they struggle with? Can we be specific? Can we put you know, can we ID that? What exactly is challenging about being a child learning a second language, specifically English? Isn't it true that, I mean, they're children. Isn't it easy for them? That's what I've heard. <laughs> Just being devil's advocate out there, right? I mean, this is the impression that many people have, that, that kids really don't need a lot of support because they'll pick it up. So what do we have to say that, that contradicts that and helps us understand the nature of of the challenge thoughts 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 dr Barr, what's your top of mind one thing <laughs> that, that you want to say well uh i guess my main point is that reading is not the same thing as learning the language because uh yes uh kids can pick up the language uh by exposure it's if if they're I guess immersed and they're within the critical period and so forth, but learning to read in a language that's not your own is not easy, especially if your um, uh, if your native language doesn't fit the uh, the phonemes of English or the uh, writing system of English. Yeah. So that's that's my point. Thank you. Anyone want to piggyback or add on to that? <laughs> I'd say English in particular has its own challenges to offer, right? Uh, if we're talking about just any second language, it's it's easy to stay hypothetical. But if you're talking about English, 
English has some particular challenges. Um, I'd like to show just one video that illustrates that challenge pretty, uh, pretty clearly. It's one that uh, we show in many of our training courses early on. Um, and I'd like to share that with you now. Um, give me one moment here. Here we go. I'm going to share with you. This is a clip of one of our teachers, uh, Liz Bigler, working with a Japanese student at that moment. Uh, this is a middle schooler. And he's working through a vocabulary sheet. I hope this is helping you see this as big as possible. <laughs> um, and so he's working through a vocabulary exercise. He knows these words. He's able to uh, identify the meaning of each word. But listen to what happens when he's reading and uh, and just think about what the implications are of how he struggles with knowing how these words sound so that knowing is not the same as doing. Uh, and here he goes. And she would see a girl with the tears in her boys don't see it. Okay. What if I tell you this word is gray day? Gray day? Mm hmm And pay. And pay tears. Yeah. She couldn't believe this many people were here to see her. She was a no, no beast, no vice. Which one? No vice. Okay, I'm going to tell you that it's an olive sock word. Okay. Olive sock. Olive sock. No beast. That's right. Mm -hmm. Most new people wow. have this large of raw cloth. What's this word? Cloth. That word is brown cow. Wow. Yeah. So just a quick snapshot of, of what's going on in the learner's head, how we can adjust with color vowel, and then how they're able to do something they weren't before. Any reactions or new thoughts about that clip? Some of you have seen it just for the first time. I heard somebody say, wow. Did somebody that was say me. All right, you've seen this clip many times. So what leaves you saying wow yet again? Oh, I, right now in my adult literacy class, I'm working on um, open and closed syllables. And I, I see that uh, what was originally uh, interpreted as no vice, which made a lot of sense, but unfortunately was, was not right. Uh, once the Once you had the knowledge that it was olive sock, and then you said, okay, that must be the first syllable. Therefore, it must be a closed syllable, nav, and then the second syllable is unstressed, is. But I mean, look, look at all the rules and and uh, 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 patterns that you have to know in order to get that right. I was really impressed. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Uh, for anybody who's new, what we're using here and what, what Liz was referring to in that video is uh, the color vowel system. And I'm going to just provide us all with that foundation. I'm going to spotlight myself for a minute. Um, the chart is behind me, but I'm actually going to use images because images are so friendly to elementary school students. And, and both Chelsea and Becky will be referring to images today. So we're going to explore it together. Um, and we just have a few of them today. I'm not going to go through every color on the chart, but we will get to those that were just mentioned in that video. Um, so if you'd like, go ahead and you can mute yourself. Uh, but I'm just going to present these here. Uh, this is the first sound in the chart, right up upper right corner, green, T, E. And the idea is that each of the keywords in this anchor phrase contain the sound that they represent. And so you don't have to memorize so much as become familiar with an image in your mind. Uh, green, T represents that E sound. And we can call all kinds of words green words when they feature that sound in the main syllable, the stress syllable. So teacher is a great green tea word and you can try it and hear it. Green tea, e, right? And green tea, teacher. Uh, if you want, find some uh, the chat over there and add three or four more green words for me. As we continue, silver pin, i, silver pin sound. Uh, we've got gray, day, a, red, pepper, a, eh. black, cat, a, ah. 
And finally, this is what happened today with the word novice. He was directed with olive, sock, ah, and was able to apply that sound, that color, to the word he saw to say novice instead of novice. Those are just a few of the color vowels, uh, but it gives you an idea of how we use these anchor phrases to provide the learner with the name for a sound. Uh, we'll maybe, I think we'll be touching on, on why other names haven't worked very well so far, uh, but these are clean names, they're memorable names, and the names feature the sound in them, okay? Uh, please appease, and Indonesia is over there in the chat. Yes, Becky, well done, <laughs> okay? So thank you for those. Uh, so that's just a glimpse of the color vowel system and the color vowel chart uh, as we move into our presentations for today. Again, it's just so exciting to have uh, K through five teachers who are, have their feet on the ground. They're actually working every day uh, with children who are learning English and they're using the color vowel system along with all of the other materials that they use and teach with um, so that this is not a replacement system. This is an enhancement mm -hmm. um, and this provides a clear bridge between spoken and written English. Okay, so now that I've I've given you that intro, <laughs> I'd like to move right into our presenters. And I'd like to start with Becky Horner. Uh, Becky Horner is up in Philadelphia, not far from here. Um, she is at, remind me of the name of your school, Becky. I just had it and now I've lost it. Solace Cohen Elementary in the school district of Philadelphia. Fantastic. Um, so right there at Solis Cohen and you teach, uh, you teach all, is it all elementary grades up through grade five? Is that right? School is K through five and we have a large ESOL population out of 1200 students, more than 1200 students. We have 56% uh, are in our ESOL program. So we have 10 ESOL teachers at our school. And our numbers are growing and mostly uh, Spanish is the number one language, then um, Portuguese, Chinese and Arabic. Then we have Pashto, Bangla, Bengali and some other languages too. So in addition to uh, learning the sound system of English and becoming familiar with say uh, social language and then academic sound language, we also have those, those different alphabets and writing systems that have to be traversed into English. Yeah, lots of challenges there. Great. Um, so Becky, would you like to share with us what you've been doing? We'd love to see. Sure, I'll share my screen now. And thanks for having me. It's good to see everybody, Dr. Barr, and and some familiar faces too. I started my color vowel journey, uh, whew, uh, uh, 2015, I wanna say. I heard about it and I, I come down for some training in um, DC with Karen. And this year I am doing like the full dive into the, the training that's wonderful. And I have just finished uh, Color Val Yoga in January. We just finished uh, spelling exploration this past month. And I have to do some caveats. This video is from last year. And so I've learned so much this year that um, I would do things differently too. So I would highly recommend level two training. Um, I, I will just show a little video and then talk a little more about how we teach phonics at my school. And who are you teaching in this video, Becky? I'm so sorry. This is a second grade class. So at our school, we have challenges like many schools in a large urban district, the school district of Philadelphia. I'm not going to go into all of the challenges, but one main challenge we had at our school was our principal um, not really understanding language acquisition only made it had us as co-teachers. So I, so this is a a whole class of second graders. And I've been trying to, uh, I'm evangelist and proselytist, proselytizing, proselyt I'm spreading the color vowel good news in my, <laughs> let's just put it that way. And so I'm, you know, the, the, classroom teacher is probably in the back of the room. So this is a room of newcomers. It's a room of 26 um, second graders. And wow a program called Hegarty. And this is a scripted program and it's pedagogy and they would have you do a hand motion for different things. And they would have you do a roller coaster to put to pay attention to the vowel sound. But I said, this is color vowels. And I'll show you some more slides with what we're doing, how it lines up with color vowels in a minute. But this is the Hegarty lesson and I'm adding color vowels. You have some question first, Karen? Yeah. 
Well, before you hit that play, because I there's it's it's beautiful right here. Talk to us about what's behind you. I think we see all these mouths and faces. Yes. Uh, so what happened during the pandemic, our um, literacy coach probably had a lot of extra time on her hands, and she did a lot of research on the science of reading, and she's wonderful and very bright, and she brought the sound wall to our school, this Hegarty program, and also another program that I'm enrolled in called the Letters Program, Language Essentials for Teachers of Reading and Spelling, and all of those programs just coincide with everything I've learned about the color vowel uh, approach. And, and the color vowel approach provides the tools, simple, easy to use tools and the language to teach in the way that science is now telling us how we should teach phonics. An wow. oral and an oral program first, you know, take out the letter. So that's what Hegarty is. So in this lesson, well, is that enough, Karen? Should I jump in? Yeah, now? all it is. And, and yet what I want to point out, it's neat. You've got sounds on the wall with the, the faces being what we see mostly. Yeah. And then the letter on the floor. <laughs> I kind of like that as a symbol of... We ran out of room. So this this sound wall, I'll show you a slide about it, but it's something called kid lips. So our literacy coach ordered a packet of kid lips for everybody. And it has, you know, even fricatives and affricates and, and the teachers were, you know, they didn't study linguistics. So they're like, what are we doing with this? This is another thing we have to teach. But when I saw the vowel valley, as everybody knows from the, you know, phon phonetic alphabet, that this is I said, this is the color vowel approach, but the icons, and I'll show you in a minute what some of the icons were, were dumb. <laughs> I'm just going to put it simply and you'll see why. So I did an overlay and at the time I didn't have my um, account wasn't active maybe, or I didn't, I didn't download the color vowel icons. I made my own and, and put them on top of so I put, um, you know, I put red pepper on top of, you'll see it was a picture of an, a guy standing on an edge of something. We don't even know what he's doing, but it feels good. All right. So the, that's the vowel valley. And so I always did my um, Hagerty in front of the vowel valley. I always did my Hagerty in front of the vowel valley and did the color vowel warmups and everything with, with that because I hadn't convinced everybody about the color vowel approach. I couldn't put a poster in the mainstream classroom because everybody was still, you know, this isn't my own classroom where I would have a poster. So I'm still making inroads with color vowel approach. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's see what's going on here. All right. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> so what's going on is I've taught them to pull out the vowel sound. And at times I've had them work with a partner listening for it or a table. Everybody do agree what the sound is, but here they've gotten so good at it that they can just, I kind of give a little wait time. And then I say, you know, ready, set, and they all say it together. So that's what you'll see. Wait, let me go back a minute here. I have to get rid of this. How do I get rid of it? I, we never used Zoom when we were teaching online. We used Google Classroom. I'll go back to the beginning. Here we go. Becky. Can you hear it? Yes. Can you hear it? Yes. Okay. I, th I can't remember. I think the word was shirt. Okay. Okay. I think we missed the first word, but there'll be a couple more words. So. Oi! 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 So I'm just going to stop right there because it really shouldn't be about spelling. And so that's something that now in my um, in-depth color vowel level two training, I've learned. But at the time, I'm just trying to tie it in. Uh, this was last year. Well, it, but it's a neat piece because you're making that bridge right then and there. I mean, you've learned a lot more, but it's not that 
it's not that we can't connect it. It's that I think in that moment, and, and I have to share that I've watched this video. I'm acting like I haven't, but I have, right? Um, is that at that moment, I think you said, what what letter is that? And then they said, you, um, whatever, oh, whatever. In the other one, Budge. Oh, this was good, right? Oh, yeah, it was good. And I just pointed out because on the sound wall cards, you, yeah. you, um, let me fast. Can I jump to those yeah. now? Okay. I'm not sure yeah, these are not problems. This is wonderful. And as Shirley said, they're beautifully engaged. You know, that's that's quite we love remarkable. it. The kids love it. They have so much confidence, especially the newcomers, especially the kids who were feeling lost. You know, they really get this confidence up. And I've I just seen amazing results. So this is just one of the books that talks about speech to print. And um, let me see if I can get beyond that. And this is a, these are the three programs I mentioned, the Hagerty, the letters and the kid lip pictures. And what your, your slides are not showing, uh, we're not seeing your slides. We're seeing just the picture of the, the video of the kids. Oh, okay. Why is that? I wonder. Okay. Let me change here. I'm sharing. What did I do wrong? Resume share. Sorry. I paused my share. Okay. So in the vowel, in the kid lip pictures, the way they have them like you can you see this one yes okay so apron <laughs> how much easier is it to call it a gray word apron my kids don't even know that word in english apron right or edge you know you look at that picture you're not sure what you're looking at you know most kids and you're going to call it the edge sound no that doesn't make sense but that what you're supposed to do with kid lips is put a post-it over the spelling and leave that post-it over the spelling until you introduce the spelling in your phonics program i see yeah what wonderful so so that's why the color vow as you know you know we're going to avoid the confusion of using letter names short e or you know we don't have a name for these other sounds like long a but some of them we don't have an easy name for like oi oi turquoise toy and the color vow just lessens the cognitive load by you know giving a color to it and let's just practice red words so that's a slide from karen obviously and well, um ah, these, there we go that's these, neat. these are my icons up close <laughs> that i did but um what i love about this and and i'd love to hear from others too what i love about this is is recognizing uh, just as we say there are many right ways to speak, there are many ways to reach young learners. And I love how you're blending um, your programs together. You know, over in the chat, we, I mean, I just had to write those words to Hegarty, letters, kid lips. You've got a lot of different tools, a lot of different training, and you're synthesizing all of that. And you're bringing ColorVal in to simply finish it off um, and, and to fill in any gaps, which which do exist, right? I think um, that's the thing, filling in the gap for for ESOL students and also um, not just synthesizing, but simplifying. Mm. Yeah, really simplifying. And so, Becky, how do learners talk about English? Do they use these references? Do you hear them asking about red words? In my small groups, we do, and I'll just go through uh, on this side. We were talking about this in class, how we had a sound for unicorn, but we don't need it. The, the hidden Y is something they'll notice. But in, in my class, um, we start with just the oral before introducing the, the letters, you know. So once they learn the sounds, we can talk about the body parts being head, leg, you know, red pepper head, red pepper leg. So before you even introduce the um, letters, you're you're going through thematically um, organizing the vocabulary they're learning with pictures, right? Or objects even better, real life objects. And then um, you have all of your icons and I'm so excited in the library that we have um, access to these to, to do word markups. And um, so I'm gonna try to get rid of this on the bottom here. Ah, I have too much stuff on the bottom. So I just start off the school year by um, making sure they pronounce, we pronounce everybody's names correctly. So that's the most important thing I think 
with ESOL students is to get everybody's name pronounced correctly. This is another slide that Karen shared with me of names on a door with the icons from the color vowel approach. Well, and that's back to that for just a second. That's actually Chelsea uh, right here in the room with us. Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a beautiful segue in a few minutes here. Um, so yeah. you know, those of you that aren't familiar with, with how names work, um, we love to start with names, right? It's the most personal word that every kid knows is their own name and being able to figure out how that, how that name sounds in an English setting uh, is, is illuminating for the child as well as for the adults who support that child. Um, so exciting. And validating because we have we've had students whose names were mispronounced for years. And then when in fourth grade, you know, A-N-S, no, my name's Ennis. He'd been called Ants and and put up with it. Ennis. Now we're gonna call you Ennis. That's your name. Because from Arabic to English, the parents are just putting down letters they think might represent the sounds of the name. So oh, yeah, definitely. We find uh, names that are spelled in ways that are very sort of surprising to us. And then we figure out later on, and they might not get to be changed either because they've been sort of set in stone. Right. Can... Great. Any final thoughts there, Becky? Um, well, I was just going to just say that the, using the color valve tools gives us many opportunities to interact with and to deeply learn new words. So starting with the oral, then finding the stress syllable and the color, writing them in their color valve organizer. And then I created color valve folders for my students with a, a page designated for that color so that they would then transfer the words there and their activities such as flooding and doing a spelling exploration and they do copy the word in their new word notebook. And um, that's basically it. Yeah. Wonderful. So. Well, thank you very much. You know, we're going to come back to those names in just a moment. Um, and I'd like to follow up with a, a couple of thoughts and ideas and resources, just looking at what some others have done that are similar. Um, everybody saw just now Becky's picture of, uh, of a color valve organizer with some images in there. I recently had a teacher, one of our teachers in Costa Rica, who um, was thoughtful to create sort of the first exposure. Isn't this neat? Ooh. To create a first exposure to color vowels by simply providing a, a coloring sheet for his young learners so that they become, I don't know, coloring friends with each of these sounds. Uh, once we talked, I, I then said, hey, why don't you have them actually say uh, the name of the of the of the word and the sound at the same time. So this child is coloring and saying red pepper, eh, 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 you know, and coloring while doing that to add that multi sensory experience to it. So that's pretty neat. I give uh, that's Leo Leonardo Mesa Cruz down in Costa Rica. Same teacher with some of his older learners um, starts using those images to highlight key words on his board. So he's gotten really good at these these sort of quick draw McGraw <laughs> versions of the color val images. Uh, I thought that was pretty innovative of him. Um, and we've actually been working with that idea for our notebooks and what learners can do for themselves. Um, so just that thought there. I wanted to then, um, I wanna move, and I wanna thank you, Becky, for your, your video and your insights and your excitement. Um, I love seeing how color val threads in with existing programs. Um, your mention of names is probably a great segue to uh, to Chelsea, who's actually going to talk about academic English and how she's been um, helping her learners with academic vocabulary. But uh, Chelsea, if it's okay with you, I'd like to play a, a short video and then segue to that slide of yours with the names before we bring in your piece. How does that sound? Perfect. Great. Okay. Well, this is a video uh, I don't get to show very often, but I just think it's it really helps us uh, capture what's so powerful when you have an easy reference to talk about how a word sounds. This is a group of fourth graders. They're newcomers in Colorado. This is a while back. Um, there are just four of them, and you're going to see that we're we're spending time with their names. And this boy, I want you to watch him. Um, his name is Eliezer. Eliezer. And if you have trouble saying his name, uh, that's a bit of the point. Uh, he, in fact, he came into the room after the teacher warned me and said, you know, he's pretty active. He might not be ideal to, you know, to video because <laughs> he might be disruptive. 
And um, I said, oh, well, let's try it. And um, and he came in and he was animated. And you'll see he's about to say, oh, my name is really hard. Nobody gets my name. And and that's actually the very experience that we're aiming to mitigate is how is this child's name said by others and how will they know how to say this kid's name? Um, so this is a short clip, uh, but one that's a nice a nice segue. Here we go. Uh, this is going to get louder. Don't worry. <laughs> so I may forward a bit. And today you're going to name the colors. And you will play a little bit of the game that LESF knows. But first, we're going to find out what color your name is. If you know what color your name is, you can listen to other words and their colors too. So let's listen to start over here with does me. Is it does me or does me? Which does. one? Ah, so is it the first or the second? The first one. Can you try that with me? We're going to throw a name where it's big. Does me. Try that with me. Does me. Does me. Does me. Does me. I'm not fall. We're throwing it out here. Does me. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Does me. Does me. Now watch. Does me. These so-called disruptive learners or learners that are a little active, they love this, don't they? Right? The movement, the grabbing, the, the physical experience of language is big. And suddenly he's right there um, in the zone, right there with us. Uh, I'll just continue for just a bit longer and then we'll move. <laughs> I call that name, that sound. That sound is black cat. We have a mega cup of black cat. Dazzle. Dazzle is a black cat name. So I'm going to put black cat right here. Dazzle. Now we're going to next greatest person with Jasmine. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Jazz about it's something for him on Eliezer. It's hard. Eliezer. What makes it hard? Is it really hard? Who is it hard for? Because a body can say my a body can say my name. Because mm, okay. maybe it's unfamiliar to many people. Yeah, I know. Well, well let's make it easier for them. Okay. So is it Eliezer? Eliezer? Eliezer or Eliezer? Okay, so Eliezer. Yeah, no, 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 Eliezer. Yeah, like that. Like that. Okay, let's throw it out. Are you ready? Yeah. Eliezer. 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 Now, I told you this was black cat, so we're just going to use black for a minute. Watch this. I'm going to take out some colors for a minute. Black, right there. Black Jasmine. Black Jasmine. Yellow. Red. Oh, yellow. No. Eliezer. No. No. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's like yellow, yellow. He really wants it to be yellow. It's his favorite color, and it matches. And he's right, right. It's just that we don't use that word. We use red. So that's that's why he's he's protesting. Here we go, and then we'll wrap up. No. Now remember, it's not the color you see. Because you have your favorite color. I'm not going to change that. But you do have new colors that you hear. So when you listen to red, red, eh, eh, Eliezer, that is a red name. Can I say that's a red word? Yeah, red, red. And you still have your favorite color. Yellow, right? Oh, yeah. Blue. What's your favorite? Blue. Oh, that's right. Blue. Sometimes. Okay. So we have a little chatter there. Um, but we've engaged an entire lesson is focused on their names. That's the curriculum. And that's been, um, we've, we've found that that's a great first way into connecting with learners. Chelsea, let's go to your slide and tell us how did that help your learners feel like they were part of your school? And you can also move right into your presentation. Welcome. <laughs> um, Chelsea's yeah. joining us from Michigan. And um, is it Marietta School District? Marinette. Mm -hmm. Marinette. Yes. 
I have lots of fun. My town is Menominee and my school is Marinette. So lots of, you know, (laughs) lots of long indigenous words and French words. (laughs) Um, Actually, before I share my slides, um, do you want to look again at the the door picture? Because I don't have that one. Can you share that? Um, Sure. In fact, I think um, Becky might have that and I might have that. I can uh, pull it up if you want. Yeah, put sure. that right up. Okay, okay, I'll share it real quick. Yeah, there's a there's a really profound. I I think there are a couple of profound uh, moments if you look at this door carefully. Okay, so let tell me us about this. Get bigger. Yes. So this is the um, intro to color vowel that I do with my students. It's the way to introduce it to them, typically at the beginning of the year when we are, um, you know, learning about our students and trying to, um, like Becky said, you know, value their identities and the pronunciation and correct pronunciation of their names. So, um, you know, I have the the color vowel chart and I'll show in some of my images. We, um, I like to use sticky notes often. So we, we tend to look at the chart and then we were trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what um, sound best represents our names if we focus on um, the stress vowel. So I try not to use all the terminology right away, but you know, we say their names and we focus on that stress and use our hands and um, figure out what is the color. And um, I love the color vowel images. I use these as a tool often. And and so we use these um, to decorate the door with our names and, you know, to to show not only like, um, you know, to practice this in class, but this is on the outside of our door. So when um, students and teachers and principals are walking by, they can, you know, look at our door and see like, okay, so what is this all about? And and learn about the correct pronunciation of names, because it is so important. And a lot of our students, you know, feel shy and they don't want to correct anyone if they make a mistake about their name. So this gives them, you know, a, a nice way to, um, to introduce that topic. Um, so I want to and Chelsea, sure. just before we stop that slide, I want to point out yeah. one, the, the real aha of that. Look at the one child's name that is green tea. Becky, if you could share that slide one more time. Yeah, there's a green tea right up in the upper right corner you, of the slide. <laughs> Tell us about that child. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is our sole Vietnamese student at the middle school. Um, so she came as a fifth grader and, you know, really struggled with um, what? I want to preface by saying now she is thriving and she, you know, she works a lot with our Spanish kids. So she's like learning Spanish, teaching them Vietnamese. But the, the issue was that her name is pronounced me. But when you see this written on paper, we obviously say my in English when it's written like this. Um, So this gave her a way to, um, you know, an empowering way to, to help people learn the pronunciation of her name. So, you know, she could just say this, my name is me. And if we were looking at the door, it's green tea me. And then, you know, this resonates with um, the teachers and the students that she's sharing this with. And I I can confidently say, like, I have, I have not heard any teacher refer to her as my, and everyone <laughs> knows that it is me. And I think, you know, this really helped. Wonderful. Thank you. I use it all the time to try to correct my, you know, not correct, but to remember somebody's name. Oh, they're a black. Oh, that's right. Gladys or whatever. Um, So it's pretty handy. Great. Well, thank you. So Chelsea, you're going to share with us some vocabulary ideas, some academic vocabulary, right? Yes. So can everyone see my screen in in a second? There we go. Um, So, you know, we talk about how how does color vowel bridge the gap with um you know areas in our curriculum that doesn't necessarily directly address phonemic awareness and you know within um all levels but with upper elementary you know i think sometimes in in younger elementary grade levels it's definitely a focus but you know it it starts to trickle out by the time we get to middle school um so color vowel is a really great way that i use to easily enhance my lessons and colorize (laughs) my vocabulary instruction. So this is an example of one of 
the um, my most recent lessons. So I use a variety of curriculum. Um, I use the, I know if, if you are a K-12 EL teacher, you'll know these acronyms, but the WIDA ELD standards and using the can-do descriptors and things to, to focus on um, the language functions and higher order thinking. So I like to use Scholastic Action Magazine. So this is um, a recent lesson where we were learning about um, Buffalo and um, their, their role in uh, American history. So we were focusing on vocabulary, but there really wasn't anything beyond that. So here's some vocabulary words, here's the definition. So I colorized it using my color vowel tools. And um, we, uh, I used Jamboard for this particular lesson. So I put all of our vocab words on sticky notes on Jamboard and shared this on um, our, well, it's on Canvas, on our LMS system, that's the word I'm looking for. And so the students, I had them like, you know, work in small groups to figure out, okay, what is the, they're, they're introduced, you know, before to the color bell, they're familiar. And they have to sort like, where, where do these um, new vocabulary words fit on the color bell chart? So Jamboard, I'm just gonna zoom in to here. So Jamboard is one of my favorite tools to use with color vowel. Um, this is just the black outline of the color vowel chart. And then I put in my sticky notes. And um, once students, you know, organize, we, we go through and we, um, we flood different words if we have some, um, you know, duplicates. And what else did I want to focus on? Um, another low prep, well, I want to say the no, low tech, that's what I'm looking for. A low tech way to do this activity is just if you have the chart and here we go, um, old school sticky notes. So another favorite activity, go-to activity is put our new vocabulary words and figure out where they fit in the chart and um, use those as our anchor phrases to practice pronunciation. Um, and then the third version of that using Jamboard is with the color vowel images. So here um, in a different, this isn't my Buffalo activity, but this is them having the vocabulary and then dragging them to the color vowel images. I love that, Chelsea. That's, I hadn't seen that before. Uh, that's a, a really neat use of the images. Yes, it's very dynamic. The color vowel images, you can do <laughs> lots of different things with them. And actually, Karen, let me know. Oh, I'll go back to this. Um, so real quick this morning, I um, wanted to make a or create a flip video to show color vowel images, like the actual like magnetic <laughs> ones that I have and using this to practice vocabulary um, in a low tech version. I don't know if you've seen this, if you like <laughs> mind if you want me to share it or it's just him reading. Yeah, okay. Here, let me go back to, okay. So this is um, Sebastian, a second grade EL student, newcomer student. Um, so he just arrived to our school district in September, um, you know, not really speaking a lot of English and he has grown significantly since, you know, the beginning of the school year. And what I really even like surprised me in my color vowel journey, like here I am, but I was still surprised today was we've um, studied these words for the past week or so. And in our unit, um, I used a National Geographic uh, reach series. And so we studied these vocabulary words for about a week. And so he's familiar with them. We practiced pronoun um, pronouncing them. But when we reviewed them, he still had, you know, some some different mistakes with the focus vowel. Um, but as soon as I reintroduced the color vowel, as you'll see, like all of that went away and he was able, you know, I tell him it's like magic. Like <laughs> he was able to almost do that flooding, even if it's just with the single word. But, you know, when he's doing, I think it was um, olive sock. Oh, we'll, we'll find it. Let me play it here. Okay. So silver pin gift. Silver pin gift. Silver pin difference. Silver pin difference. Blue moon solution. Blue moon solution. Green tea received. Green tea received. 
Olive sock problem. Olive socks under. Black cat action. Black cat action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so with the younger elementary kids, I'm finding ways to integrate it more. I've in the past mostly used with upper elementary. So it's still very new to him. Like it's been a few weeks since we've been working with color bubble. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I wish I had the before and after so you could compare, but um, yes, next time <laughs> when I'm thinking ahead. I'm curious. This is so intriguing. Um, after this, was he then able to match them say on his own to kind of show, I think you're presenting here, right? Yes. So this, this is more presenting. Like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, still introducing this to him. So that's the goal. I can do some for, or do some future videos, but yeah, um, I didn't film this one, but I, uh, I had all of the color vowel images that connected with the vocab and had him match when we were first going over it at the beginning of the week. And, you know, he was, I, I did some guiding, but he was able to do some of that. So future video, I'll, I'll record that too. <laughs> No, wonderful. We'd love those follow-ups. Um, all of this is gold, you know. Becky, I, ha I have a question. Um, I was just noticing that he he likes to sway back and forth and fidget and so on. Is it is it possible to um, harness that energy by getting him to use the hand or or sway in time to the rhythm or something like that? Because he look at all that that I mean he's already <laughs> doing it himself uh, automatically. It would be great to to use that. Yes. Great, you know, suggestion, Robin, because that definitely, I think um, I am motivated with the, the th I, I haven't been using the, the throwing the syllables and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to like reintroduce that. So I think having him do things like throwing the words and finding, and then, yeah, he's definitely fidgety. So using his open hand um, with, with the young one, like with little, little kids, I'm still, you know, middle school and upper elementary was where I was like confident. So I'm like slowly, you know, using it with lower elementary. And I think as you've like noticed that he's more like, I think he's going to naturally uh, connect with that. Yeah. But yeah, it, you know, it doesn't have to be that particular gesture. It just could, it could be moving along with the rhythm. It, mm -hmm. You know, he could rock back and forth or, um, you know, clap his hands or I don't, whatever. I mean, I don't have, my students don't, always do the uh they they do other things <laughs> to, uh to the beat so uh uh i mean the open hand is nice for catching it but uh just getting the rhythm in there is uh he's already halfway there yeah yeah awesome so we're all yeah. brainstorming together thank you <laughs> Oh, exactly. So those big gestures, they can be poses or for this, this age as great as the high five. We can mm -hmm. even do that here online, everybody. If we take, what's one of your words there, Chelsea? Um, so we had like difference. So different. And so we come right up to the camera and do a high five. Ready? Difference, difference, di, I, 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 silver pin difference you know so when you're face to face it's great because you can just do that high five um yeah. and we've had yeah. we've had people who will grab each other's hands and kind of do a tug of war you know, on the I, I, I. Uh, so lots of ways as long as there's a kinesthetic piece to engage that uh that part of the brain that allows them to notice that sound more yeah. than yeah. if they didn't mm -hmm. use a, a gesture um, and you so, were already yeah. high-fiving with him anyway at the end <laughs> yes <laughs> right. Right. yeah so that's, that's beautiful. Next week, I mean, you guys yeah. gave me lots of ideas. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what we do. That's what we do here at Color Vowel. Um, it's actually a great segue into just reminding folks about what we do. We've got a lot of our own um, teachers in training in the room, uh, level one and level two. We've got three levels of training for teachers, including up at level three, it's the training of trainers so that you can um, be the trainer at your school. Uh, we've got, uh, for schools, we have licensing and accreditation programs so that basically we make sure that for the sake of the learner, teachers use the method consistently and accurately for the sake of the learning uh, process. Um, and so if you're new to ColorVal, just know that this is what we do. We, we watch uh, videos that learners, and uh, sorry, that teachers bring to the table. Uh, we get to recognize what's going on and praise that and then add to it. 
And so this is very, very typical of a conversation. And I thank uh, both Chelsea and Becky for coming with those open hearts and uh, open minds to share with us. Yeah. I'd like to open up the floor to any questions or comments, discussion around working with young learners. And, and that includes, you know, anybody new as well as our experienced teachers in the room. Don't be shy. I have. Yeah. Hi, Hi, Anna. Good to see you, by the way. It's been a while. Um, um, so I'm used, I'm used to with adults. adults. Are you hearing an echo? I'm hearing an echo here. Yeah, I'm going to try to turn down my, I'll see if my volume might help your echo. Try again. So I usually work with adults. Uh, I love working with adults. And, but I got thrown into um, helping out with um, the tutoring program at the center where there are children coming in who have just gotten here. Like they've been here two weeks, right? And they like know nothing. Um, so it, I, I try to start off with the name thing. I know that exercise so well. Um, but I was really running into problems when the English is so limited. Um, so I ran into the problem, the same one that you had there, that I had a, a little boy who really wanted to be yellow. He hated the fact that his name was green. Um, and it was just like, I, there was no space to talk to him about, well, I mean, I, I, I wrote down here what you said, it's not your favorite color, it's what you hear. But I mean, there, the, 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 uh, conversation is so limited because like he doesn't know any English and I started off with him actually in on zoom because we were still in it was COVID and his father was coming in to help and so the father couldn't understand mustard as a color like it's yellow and rose I've never heard of rose it's pink and he was correcting the child and I felt like wow I'm not going to embarrass the father in front of the kid and so I uh, this is not working um, at all. So I kind of forgot about that and just kind of zeroed in on the stress that they had to actually pick a syllable or sound in there that was going to be stressed. So I did the, I didn't do the throwing. I thought that would have been wonderful for him, but it was just really frustrating. I thought, wow, like I have no idea how to start this or maybe I'm doing it too soon like I shouldn't have been doing it at all I went to the flashcards that didn't work much better um so I've now had the uh, like a group of these students that I've had some other students coming in the same space but you know like they've been here two weeks and they know nothing in terms of the language but some of the kids I've had them for now for a while and I'm thinking maybe now is the time like I should have waited before I even introduced it. Um, I don't know. It was just, yeah, it's a, it did not, <laughs> it did not work. Um, yeah. I think, you know, every situation is different. Um, I know, have you thought about, and many of us do just using a few colors at once, at once, not all of them. So typically, you know, if, if you're working with an intermediate or an advanced class, it's easy enough to just introduce the chart and have the whole piece there and they get that it's the mouth. Yeah. Um, sorry, my arm disappeared there, but that this is the, the space in the mouth and these are the vowel sounds. Uh, but with those beginners, our beginning lesson plan in the color vowel approach is a great way to go. So just starting with three, three colors, three very different colors. So that would be um, E, A, and O. And that lesson, in fact, Shirley can attest to this if she's still, there she is in the room. Uh, we wrote this lesson plan and tested it several times. And then Shirley was the final one to test it. Can you verify like this lesson plan is tight for these uh, low literacy or low language, meaning they just don't have a lot of words yet. Uh, Shirley, you want to talk about that? Oh, I don't know if I have anything to add, but I, I, I think that there are Doing it that way, it gives them the sense of what it's all about without overwhelming them with too much information. <clears throat> and it just happens that you can find all kinds of very common words in the classroom. Excuse yeah. me, I've, I've been, I have a very 
weird sore throat here. Um, no. Very common words in the classroom to use. I can't remember what the words were in the lesson. It's been a long time since I looked at it, but it works yeah. beautifully. They're classroom words kind of, just because kind of that's foolproof. Cool. Uh huh. Yeah, we really aim to make it, uh, you know, a tight seal, so to say, on the steps so that they can't fall through the gaps. A lot of metaphors being mixed there, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> it's that's the kind of thinking we do. Um, but the other way to go, in addition to classroom words, if you're not in a classroom, would be uh, to to work toward objects that you can touch. And we get back to this what you hear versus what you see kind of thing. I'll just share this for a moment. I love starting off with my zebra. You know, this is a ze zebra. Everybody loves zebra. It's cute. You know, everyone knows a zebra, even if they've never seen one in person. Zebra. And, you know, what color? And if they're, if they're able to have that basic conversation, they're very likely to say, you know, it's black and white. I'm like, yes, with your eyes. It's, it's black and white with your eyes. But zebra zebra z e e e is a green word green t zebra and so that that's another way in when they have some words or you want to teach these words that are tangible uh, so that they're not having maybe their names you know sometimes the name might actually be a block that's sort of what i'm he hearing from your experience there anna um yeah any other thoughts to Anna's difficult experience. These are these are the golden moments. We need to hear about those so we can talk about ways through for sure. Well, another thing that that happened is is that there was an another when we went in person. There there's an, uh, there was another um, woman who was working with me who was whose background is in library science. So she was trying to get them to read, and I'm like, ooh. Um, and so the, I, I, I kind of it was zeroing back in on the sounds and the oral stuff. And then she was like wondering why we were working on what she called the medial sound. She said, that's the hardest one. We should be starting off with the words that start like the beginning sound or the ending sound. Um, and I'm like, well, I don't know, because it's the most important sound. It's the biggest sound. That's that's how we want to do it. But you know, it's really hard pushing back against you know, her, her idea. And then I was trying it with the students and I found like they, they couldn't rhyme at all. Like she, we were trying, she was, had this rhyming games like mad, hat, bat, and they, they just couldn't hear those ending sounds at all to do any kind of rhyming. Um, so it was really. I, I can, know. I can comment on that. Um, uh, the people with uh, dyslexia that I work with, um, it's, true that they have a very hard time segmenting the word so that they can isolate the middle um uh, the 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 a vowel in the middle okay so it's a lot easier for them to uh, isolate the first sound or the last sound mm -hmm. so uh, all of the um i work with the wilson system so all of the key words have initial vowels so it's a apple a ah, um but then it's e ed and I think, why Ed? Well, it turns out that's uh, Susan Wilson's husband's name. Um, and uh, so we use, we've replaced that by elephant. Um, but you can't say egg, for example, because uh, uh, egg it could be, uh, well, like like Shirley, uh, you have it as gray day, not, not red pepper and so on. Um, and uh, uh, then... For the letter I, the sound I, the silver pin word, well, what starts with an I? Um, igloo is one that I've seen. Itch is the one that Wilson uses. Um, neither one of those is you know, really common vocabulary. So, uh, And I defy anybody to come up with colors that begin with the vowel sounds. We, we don't have, I mean, hardly any of our colors start with a, a vowel sound. But I, I understand where your librarian is coming from if she's worked with anybody with dyslexia, because it is very difficult for them to uh, be able to rhyme uh, and to be able to segment out uh, the middle of, of the word. And that's why uh, Karen's invention of the vowel grab uh, is so brilliant because it puts the the medial vowel between two glottal stops, and that allows uh, 
even people with dyslexia to to hear the segmental sound. So that uh, um, if you want to work on the vowel grab, uh, that might be a way around the problem. For anyone who's not- By glottal stops, I meant, so if you say uh, yeah. a black cat, uh, cat, a, 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 a. but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm changing the k and the t into just glottal stops, a, 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 instead of cat, 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 cat. You hear that? So that they're able to segment out the glottal stops better than the, the k and the t. Mm -hmm. And I think the key there is is with chill well with learners we're sensitizing them to the what's so called medial sounds, so that they not only can identify those, but also so that they can then organize words, organize words by their stress syllable wherever that syllable might be, so that banana they can find the and banana the second one the medial one. And and they're able to also take those first syllable stress words in any word, rather than having a curated uh, sequential list. And that that is structured phonics. You know, that's any structured literacy program. That's the beauty of those good programs like Becky's uh, that you're using is you you have that sequential treatment that learners some learners need, especially learners with suspected uh, language based learning difficulties like dyslexia. Um, but meanwhile, that's that's that sequential approach and color vowel allows us to organize all the words that they actually hear in real life, regardless of who's teaching them in what way. So, you know, I always think about my son, you know, it was all about Toy Story at the age of three and four. And those are the words he cares about. Those are the words he wants to, you know, basically keep in place and organize. So it's gonna be light year and buzz and inconvenient words, right? But we now can do that because no words are inconvenient when you take this stress-based approach. Becky. Well, I just wanted to say to Anna, for little kids, I've been working with kindergartners and um, I start with just, uh, you have to start with the consonants, I think. And we start with the consonants in their name, mm, you know, whose name starts with mm. I don't know if you agree with this, Karen and Dr. Barbet, that um, consonants almost have to come, that awareness and what the amount, the pa, pa, pa. So a lot of language and fun, you know, body parts and, and get them engaged in a lot of movement. And there's a website I love called Elf. Um, I think it's called Elf Videos. Let me look at it. Elf Kids Videos. And they have a lot of great songs. So I, I don't think, I didn't start with kindergartners with vowels at all. We, you know, we started with just with hearing the sound, the beginning sounds in our names. The, oh, my name starts with that. Oh, my name starts with that. After the consonants, I feel like then the vowels come. Is that right? Yeah. So the consonants are easier to uh, become aware of, in, uh, not by the sound, but by the feeling in the mouth, because you're actually touching something. This is why I bring out the lollipops for using with uh, vowels, so you have something for your tongue to, to react to. But uh, in terms of um, matching rhymes, uh, that's hard to, uh, uh, that you don't need to, to know the consonants in order to use the color vowel chart. So I don't know, I, I, I don't see any reason to that you have to wait to do the vowels until you've introduced the consonants what do you think karen i i agree i think uh we have to remember it's easy for us to think that the, the our learners are being exposed only to what we do with them but they live let's call it the other 23 hours of the day minus when they sleep and they're being you know they're coming into contact with all kinds of words and sentences and ideas um and and so we can't, we're not going to protect them from that, first of all, nor do we want to. We want to have ways to harness the outside world of their existence into what we do in instruction. Um, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to be the advocate of the organic experience uh, brought into a place where you could organize it. And and then there is a place for I, instruction yeah. as well. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that um, if you're doing phonological awareness and what is your mouth doing when you say this sound, Yes, consonants are easier, but uh, you don't have to be actually using the the vowel valley or, or whatever it is uh, uh, when you introduce the color vowel chart. You don't have to make sure they understand what it means when your tongue when it, when it's a high front vowel or a low back vowel, right? I mean it, that's hard to that's hard for your tongue to feel, but they don't need to know that yet. No, they don't. And vowel yoga helps with that too, by the way. Yeah. 
Thank you for reminding us. Yeah. And so all of this that you've been hearing, everybody, and I want to thank you for that's a great way to kind of sew things up, um, is that we we have many tools, many strategies for basically reaching the learner where they are. Uh, we also provide training to help you know how to notice where the learner is. I think sometimes we get so much training in the programs and the tools that uh, we deliver those things and kind of forget how to find, uh, you know, what what do they have within them that we can hook on to. And so we provide training in that kind of noticing, uh, being able to see what the signs are of, of phonemic awareness and how it takes place, as well as who that person is, what their identity is, how we can harness their identity uh, into what they need to be learning for language, for efficiency. Um, we do have an upcoming course, by the way, that's, I think, highly relevant to what we're talking about today. That is textbook integrations. It begins in April, on April 6th. And in that course, we'll be taking the color vowel approach into textbooks and asking the question, how can we bring textbooks into this oral place primarily so that we're not putting our nose down in the book uh, to learn something that is actually um, a face up kind of skill, isn't it? <laughs> the the face up skill of of speaking, listening, as well as reading and writing, I would argue, by the way. Uh, so that's a pretty exciting course. Take a look over in the chat if you're interested uh, in learning more about textbook integrations. Uh, Shirley and I have taught that a couple times. Um, I'm I'm heading off to Portland with Shirley this month. Hi, Shirley. And uh, we're excited. We've been uh, we're going to be retooling it and looking at it yet again in new ways. Um, we'll be working with your textbooks as well as a few examples of our own. Uh, what else? We know about the Color Vowel Teachers Community. In case you uh, weren't at the very beginning of this presentation, uh, Fridays at 5, you can always go to learn.colorvowel.com to get uh, all signed up. Um, if you came here straight from our newsletter but you haven't joined, this is a good reason to join. All of our events take place from the teachers community with links directly available at the moment. I also can uh, remind you minutes before the event, okay? Um, so thanks everybody for being here. I wanna thank our presenters once again. Uh, Chelsea, thank you. And Becky, thank you for sharing your footage, your insights. Uh, getting a glimpse of what you do with kids has been just a wonderful eye-opening um, experience for us to see how you combine it with your curricula and with your materials, okay? Um, any closing comments, takeaways? What's been exciting for you today? Throwing and grabbing. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's just a different concept. And I think it, certainly with kids, it would that would resonate better than your open hand. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the open hand modified to this grabbing the vowel and um, framing well, it with throwing it. stops. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 wonderful. Their takeaways. I'll take one. Um, so yeah, ELF videos are great. Um, I have taught beginning reading along with no English kids first, second grade. So, and I do a combination of consonants. We work on letter sounds. We work on CVC words, which now I would totally put in and we wouldn't have the hours. They would be the black CVC words, right? So it's so easy to work in, but I will say I did lots of music videos. ELF Kids is a great site. Um, Bazillions is one that's really good for consonants. The bunch of ones out there and the kids love them and they can like grab those words so much easier when they're in songs. Mm. So, yeah. And I have some that are in, I think 11th grade right now, 10th or 11th grade. And they still, you know, will say, <laughs> We love the spaghetti song. <laughs> yep. Those of us that grew up here in the States remember at a certain era, remember all of the uh, the Saturday morning, what do they call it? Um, Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse yeah, Rock. School rock. rock. There we go. I can remember the songs, just not the name of the whole program. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. There wasn't a song with Schoolhouse Rock in it. <laughs> so, uh, but memory is an amazing My takeaway... My takeaway is just I'm really happy to see again uh, prioritizing sounds over before symbols seems to be the way to go for e even for teaching reading. So that's what I've definitely found. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We look forward to seeing you again soon. 
couple of just the last big things I'll mention. We do have um, on in March 31st, save the date. That is a Friday. Uh, we will have um, not at five, though. It will be at 1 p.m. Eastern. And watch for this announcement. We're going to have a really exciting panel discussion about uh, British English, American English, and all of the world Englishes. How do we teach around the world with the color vowel chart? Guess what? It works. And so we'll be hearing from panelists as to um, how the chart accommodates all kinds of accents of English uh, for the millions of English teachers around the world. So join us for that. And if you're going to Portland, let us know. We want to see you there. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Travel well if you're traveling. Uh, be well if you're being. And we'll see you again soon. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye bye. Having me. Thank you. Good to see you, everybody. Bye bye.